Thank you for listening to the Health and Safety Podcast. I'm Michael Wong, Founder and Executive Director of the Physician Patient Alliance for Health and Safety. PPHS has often advocated the need for clinicians to address respiratory compromise, a subject that we have often discussed in reference to patients who have had adverse events or deaths due to opioid-induced respiratory depression. The Physician Patient Alliance for Health and Safety would like to thank Medtronic for their generous support of this clinical education series. Through the financial support of Medtronic, PPHS can offer this educational series with full independent control over all programmatic and editorial aspects of the series, including selection of the clinicians to be interviewed, discussion topics, and questions asked. As a global leader in medical technology, services, and solutions, Medtronic improves the health and lives of millions of people each year. Medtronic believes its deep clinical, therapeutic, and economic expertise can help address the complex challenges such as rising costs, aging populations, and the burden of chronic disease faced by families and healthcare systems today. But Medtronic can't do it alone. That's why Medtronic is committed to partnering in new ways and developing powerful solutions that deliver better patient outcomes. To help us better understand what is respiratory compromise and why clinicians in their healthcare facilities should care about respiratory compromise and adopt clinical practices to prevent respiratory compromise, today I'm speaking with Dr. Jeffrey Vender. Dr. Vender is Emeritus Chair of Anesthesiology at North Shore University Health System. Dr. Vender has served as the president of the Illinois Society of Anesthesiologists and the American Society of Critical Care Anesthesiologists. Both Jeff and I are members of the Clinical Advisor Committee of the Respiratory Compromise Institute. Jeff is the representative for the Society of Critical Care Medicine. The Respiratory Compromise Institute can best be described as a coalition of medical and safety organizations devoted to raising awareness about respiratory compromise. Dr. Vender is chairman of this Clinical Advisor Committee, so we are honored to hear from Jeff about the Respiratory Compromise Institute and what he hopes the Institute will achieve. Welcome to the podcast, Jeff. Thank you. For the listeners not familiar with you or your work, could you give us a brief introduction about yourself? Uh, I'm a clinical professor of anesthesiology and critical care at the University of Chicago School of Medicine, Pritzker School of Medicine. Uh, I'm an anesthesiologist, intensive care trained physician who works in a uh, large university affiliated hospital system in Chicago. Excellent. Today, we're talking about respiratory compromise and the Respiratory Compromise Institute. To get everyone listening on the same page, let's start with your own definition of respiratory compromise, or if you prefer, the definition that the Respiratory Compromise Institute uses. Clearly, uh, there are multi-definitions out there, but the one that I have typically employed and the Respiratory Compromise Institute has used defines respiratory compromise as a state in which there is a high likelihood of decompensation into respiratory failure and or death, but in which specific interventions, be it therapeutic and or monitoring, might prevent or mitigate the the compensation. Thanks, Jeff. As I mentioned previously, respiratory compromise often occurs with the administration of opioids. However, your description of respiratory compromise includes non-opioid situations. Could you please describe some examples of respiratory compromise that may not involve or be associated with opioid administration? Well, there are numerous situations where Patients with underlying pulmonary disease are in very chronic but stable conditions. And for a multitude of reasons, either a therapeutic intervention